Does anyone else feel like they'll never be happy? Whoa. This, this title, does anyone else feel like they'll never be happy? I'm worried that this is coming from D'Angelo Wallace because I know he was suffering a bit for a long while and I was hoping he was doing better. So let's see what it is because that title is like, whoa. Okay, let's see. Does anyone else feel like they will never be happy? I do. It's not a rhetorical question. Make no mistake, I certainly feel happiness. In fact, I've been so happy recently that I wasn't thinking about any of this at all. I was going to make a video about the VMAs, this award ceremony that just went down. I was just going to go through and say like, oh, this outfit is crazy. What? And so I thought to myself like, wow, I haven't recorded an outfit review in... I was thinking like three, four years. Well, I go and I pull it up on my old channel and I see I was 21 years old the last mm. time I sat down to record a video about this. And with me now being 26, I just remember feeling the way I felt when I was making those videos and I hated it. But depression was crazy. I was constantly having just the most extreme thoughts. And so what I realized, 26 now, not 21, I, I, I kind of looked myself in the eyes and I was like, do you feel different now? And honestly, I didn't figure it out. Mm. I didn't beat depression. If you asked me at age 21, is your depression going to go away or what's your long-term plan? I would honestly have said, I don't have a long-term plan. And if this doesn't go away, then I will because I can't do this forever. Mm. But now I sort of realize I have been doing this forever and I'm fine. <laughs> it's like the weirdest, weirdest thing is I thought I would be happy. I thought something was going to fix me. I thought I was going to change. And I've always known it was impossible. I've always known that it wouldn't happen. I think that's where a lot of my fantasizing about disappearing was coming from. Mm. I knew I was never actually going to not be this way because this is just what my brain is. I remember being... Oh, I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Depression is real. We got to say that first. Depression is a real thing. It's a real experience. There's different types of depression. People have a different relationship with depression. I've been depressed. I was lucky in some ways that my depression was a symptom of something else. So I wasn't dealing with like chemical or like a permanent sort of feeling of depression, though I think those things are all under study right now. We're like debating if chemical depression is sort of like a, a real permanent thing or if it's like a matter of getting the right help, whatever that word means. I don't know. I'm not a therapist or psychologist. I'm just a person. But as a person whose depression was a symptom of something else, I was very grateful to find that out because I also remember being in my 20s because I didn't get help until I was 28, 30. Between those two years, I really thought that was going to be my whole life. And I haven't been depressed in five years, right? I'm hitting my fifth year of no depression, no self-harm, no suicidal ideations, like none of none of it. Now, for me, I'm a very much like scan the brain, tell me what's wrong with it, scan this, do this, do this test. Obviously, it took a lot of money and I put it on a credit card. But I was very much like, I need to know what is permanent and what is a relationship to something else. So, you know, everyone's going to have a different relationship. It sounds like D'Angelo is dealing with long-term depression. Probably, I'm assuming, like, something more permanent versus, like, a symptom of something else. So once I fixed the something else, fixed, you know, healed, whatever, and had a better relationship with something else, it helped. But I think that is sort of the burden of knowing the self is that you, it takes a lot of work and it's a lot of spoons and it's very hard. And that's why I say, you know, sometimes the blessing of exhaustion is it gives you an opportunity to do nothing else but heal. So, but then of course, you know, when you're exhausted, you might also choose to unalive, which is I think so relatable because that was my theory. Hey, worst case, I could unalive. Even though I got to my rock bottom, I realized when I was there, I hadn't tried one thing. Which, which was to get the tools that would make me feel like it was to utilize every opportunity first. So I kind of feel the same way about mental health and life and philosophy as I do about like plastic surgery. Before you get plastic surgery, try doing everything naturally. So before you kill yourself, try to make sure to do everything first and then kill yourself. And often most of us don't end up killing ourselves because we found out that the tool was out there. We just didn't have it accessible. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm a big fan of, you know, if there's a pill for that, give it to me. If there's an exercise for that, I'm going to do it. But just tell me what it is. And finding out what it is, as I, in my personal opinion, the hardest part. Finding out why my brain works this way is the most exhausting part of the journey, which is why most people do 
give up in a way. That's a weird word, but they don't continue the introspection journey because it's too exhausting, which is relatable. But if I didn't continue, I would have died. And I just didn't want to die. I didn't really want to die as much as I really wanted to die. I didn't really want to die. You know? 11 years old, just in my bed, looking at the ceiling and thinking to myself, like, you have seven years. I did the calculation in my head. Like, you have mm -hmm. this amount of years, this amount of days, and then you'll be an adult. Because I, in a very innocent way, thought that would make me happy, right? And then what happens? I'm 18 years old. Definitely not much better. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, you're going to get your life together. You're going to, you're going to get your bag. You're going to finish this degree. You're going to get a job. And that is going to make you happy. You're finally going to fill your life with enough stuff to where you don't have to think about the things that make you feel this way. Well, I got the degree. Uh, God only knows how things are getting pretty bad for me in those final semesters. And no, that didn't really do it either. And so when YouTube started popping off or when my channel on YouTube started popping off a few years ago, I said to myself, it has to be this. Because I, what else is there? The mm, this was definitely uh, my realization for myself too, where I was like, this is why I think the My Levels was created almost as well. Because when I was going through my introspection journey of why am I suffering? Why have I wanted to kill myself since I was eight years old? It came down to like, no matter how much money I made or what successes I had or when I, like nothing was working. And I was like, okay, what is it? And for me, it was my relationship with myself. For me personally in my journey, obviously that's why I have a whole philosophy system on introspection because for Brittany, it was about that. It wasn't just my mental health. It wasn't just my finances. It was me as a whole human being that was missing. I needed to be this whole human being because being just good at my job wasn't good enough. Being just good at my mental health wasn't good enough. Being just good at my physical health wasn't good enough. Like I needed to be a good at like these five components that I, you know, work for me. That's why I made them up. They work for me to be this person, to be joyful, to know myself, to have a relationship with myself. And so I, I think like this is so relatable. I've definitely been here, maybe not in the same way, of course, because all of our journeys are different, but this really resonates with me. And it's so weird to be now where I am because I don't even remember what it's like to be depressed. Like sometimes I wonder if I could ever feel it again. It's so far from me. And I need you to know that that is the greatest like hope I could probably send to people is I don't even know how I went from that to this. I just know that it was hard and it took a long time and it was a journey and it will always be something I work at. But like to be that far from my depression is very interesting. Yeah, like I... I'm literally a different human being. I'm literally a different human being. Money didn't make me different. My job didn't make me different. Like none of this made me different. What made me different was my relationship with myself. That's the, I changed as a person. And that was how it worked for me. But it was very hard. There was a lot of self-harming and there was a lot of messy moments. Let me tell you, girl, it was messy. The answer can't be nothing. I just, I refuse to accept it. That didn't seem fair when so much of what I was dealing with wasn't my fault. And so part of the reason I think I fell apart so completely when my break started all those years ago, I fell apart because I realized that thing that I wanted at age 11, I was never going to find that. That's what I felt looking at myself in my last outfit review when I was 21 years old. I was so sad that I had put my hope in something one more time and then it still didn't make me happy. I used to get so triggered by media intended to help people with depression. These things wind up helping a lot of people, like millions of people. But for me, it always kind of felt like a slap in the face because mm. there was an insinuation that like one day you're not going to feel like this. Stay here, you know, don't do something you'll regret because one day you're not going to feel like this. But the truth of the matter is the earliest thing I remember knowing is that I would always feel like this. I want to know why. Like, what is what is the reason? Like, does D'Angelo know why he experiences depression? Because there is a reason. So the good news is it's not just because. Like, I really need human beings to recognize this. Nothing happens just because. There is a reason. And the reason can help you mitigate harm and those thoughts you're having. It's like, it's like I've been doing a lot of research on um, undiagnosed autistics and so much of their life when they get diagnosed in their 40s is like, oh my God, my life makes so much more sense now. Every struggle I was having, every feeling of never belonging, 
everything feels better now. And so I want to know why D'Angelo is having this experience. And I'm sure D'Angelo wants to know. But if it is his brain, I'm assuming that means he had a brain scan or had some doctors examine him or something like that. That's so interesting. Is there like a medical part of this? That's Because again, it's not meant to, it's meant to give hope, but like human beings are biological creatures. Nothing just happens. So the good news is there's answers, sort of. Because we might not also have the modern day answers because we don't have the science to give us those answers. But there are answers. And that's what's so interesting about life is that, damn, we know there's an answer, but what if we haven't invented the tool to give us the answer yet? How crazy is that? That's why research needs to be funded. We need to fund research so we can get the tools to give people answers. Ugh. I remember being four years old and just thinking to myself, like, this is it. <laughs> I feel so, so, so bad right now. And I don't know how to feel better. I just, I wanted to feel better for so long. I would say all the way up through maybe 24. I was so focused on, I want to feel better. I want to feel better. All this media is telling me I could feel better. Everyone's- And for the record, I didn't feel better till I was 30. So D'Angelo is what, 26, did he say? I didn't feel, for me, 30 was the life-changing age. For me, once I turned 30, not because I turned 30, by the way, it was just how my life went. I know I say 30, but the, the emphasis you're supposed to be hearing is not that I was 30, guys. It was just that my life ended up, I'm, I'm saying it could happen at 30, 40, 50, but it wasn't because I turned 30. It was just what I was happening in my life happened to happen around the age of 30. But once I hit that that area of my life, everything started to click. Like it was like light bulbs were going off and I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. It was like, I was finally getting all of the tools were like moving this magical puzzle way when I was like, oh my God, it all makes sense. And finally, like the therapy I learned and things I learned and I was like, oh my God. But even this, this radical acceptance that you're a biological creature and that there are answers for how and why your brain works that way, that's really hard to accept. It really is because some people will think like, no, dude, there's no answer. I am just this way. I promise you, you're not just this way. Nobody is just anything. We are truly all like the great philosopher Harris says, okay? You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? You exist in the context of everything that came before you. I'm saying it gets better. What can I do? And then after 20 years of trying to get better, I started wondering, actually, would it be okay if I never got better? What if I could just figure out how good I could be within my own very bad <laughs> starting points. There are people who have seen so much more in me than what I don't see in myself. And I think part of me just getting older was realizing like, I don't have to understand. If someone tells me they love me and they see value in me and they're glad that I'm here, I don't have to understand where they're coming from. It's enough for them to perceive me that way. And so to continue existing and being that for other people, at a minimum, was enough. I don't want to just be some awful, awful story for my mom. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the story about how she tried so hard and I tried so hard and then it just di didn't work out. I don't think she deserves that. I don't want to be that story for my friends. I don't want to be that story. Mm. Mm. Using D'Angelo as a talking off point, not criticizing D'Angelo or commenting on his lived experience. They're his, right? His lived experience. I'm not commenting on D'Angelo here. But I recommend a tool I'm going to give you. And I do recommend this. It might work for you. It might not. If it doesn't, throw it away. Brie, stupid, throw it away. Stop worrying about if killing yourself is going to impact your family. And start thinking about if killing yourself is going to impact you. Because though, and do you know women attempt more than men, but men are more successful at suicide. And most women don't go through with suicide in the same way or best way because they often are thinking about their family and friends. It's true. Every time I thought about killing myself, I kept worrying that people were going to find my body. I kept thinking, maybe I'll kill myself in a sleeping bag and shoot my brains out, but then I'm in a sleeping bag, so nobody has to see my body and they can just carry me out. I kept thinking about the cleanup. How would people find my body? Like, I didn't want people to see me like that. I just wanted to die without the burden of people caring for my dead body. 
But then I start to ask myself, okay, hold up. Do you even want to die? And the truth is, is like, I never wanted to die, but I really wanted to die. I didn't want to die. I wanted to die because of other people. I didn't stop. I like, I didn't kill. I didn't stop wanting to die because I thought of my family and friends. I stopped real. I stopped wanting to die when I realized I never wanted to anyways. But hell is other people. For somebody like me, especially like I look at human beings and I think, girl, I would rather die than live in this bubble. Bye-bye. Which is why I always make a move before I kill myself to just switch bubbles. Because genuinely, like if it all it takes is me to move, I'm gonna pack my luggage today, girl. Okay? If all I have to do is pack my luggage, I'm packing. So D'Angelo is having this expression. Again, I really wanna make sure I'm not, this is not making it about him, but this is an opportunity for us to have this conversation about you're not committing suicide or not committing suicide. You're not doing anything because of the people in your life. You're doing it because it coincides with your values and how you really think about life. And this is very important, right? This is very important. Sevi says there's a whole ass philosophy about not wanting to die necessarily, but to disappear. Also something I don't experience. I never wanted to disappear. I wanted to live. This is because I, Stephanie, you're right. I think that's interesting too. But let me tell you this. I want to live. I love existing. I just want to vibe and meditate and hang out with my cat and watch anime. I just want to breathe. My joy is breathing. Give me a place to breathe and I will be, I will be fine. And who's going to stop you from being able to breathe? Only the forces of nature that come in contact with you. We are all forces of nature coming in contact with others. The thing I try not to do the most is deny people an ability to breathe, which is why I believe in rehabilitation. Because I want to give people an opportunity to breathe, to meditate, to be with the self, to exist, to simply exist. But if you only validate your existence because of other people or through the bubbles, you're never going to feel like you can breathe, bro. The bubbles suffocate you. People are suffocating and they will suffocate you with love. They will murder you in your sleep by hugging you to death. Breathing is being in a good relationship with the self. For you. <laughs> I don't want to be the YouTuber who disappeared, struggled for mental health off and on, and then it got him in the end. And the good news is I don't have to be that. Because what I now know with a certainty is after 26 years, I can say this without a doubt, I'm still going to be here. Mm -hmm. I can't say things are going to turn around, things are going to get better, I'm mm -hmm. going to figure it out. The only thing I actually know is that there's a pretty high likelihood that tomorrow I will probably have to do most of this again. And so- mm, Interesting positioning. Okay. Interesting journey point. Discourse says, yes, I didn't promise any of my family members that I wouldn't kill myself because I felt more tethered to them when I was alone and figured out- uh, and figured out, figured myself out and was able to talk with myself and exist to the point that I wanted to live instead of die. I despise when my mother would try to make me promise not to kill myself because it made me feel like a rock was on my chest. I literally told my family, if you keep telling me not to kill myself, I'm going to do it out of spite, bro. You want to talk about PDA? I tell you right now, you're annoying me. How dare you tell me what to do with my body and mind? Keep the government out of our lives, but you can't kill yourself. Please relax. I'm going to kill myself if I want to. And if you try to stop me, bro, that's exactly the reason I should kill myself. Think about the way we try to control people's bodies. If you just leave me the fuck alone, I'll stay alive. It's when you're in my business, I want to die. You're in my bedrooms. You're in my families. You're in my... I'm going to... Just like I tell you guys, I will delete this YouTube channel right now if you make demands of me. Okay? How dare you tell me what to do with my life? You either like it or you don't. Okay? Don't tell me what to do. Okay? Don't tell me what to do. And that's the dilemma. We have the audacity to tell people, you have to stay alive. Don't tell me what to do. Especially when you're literally the reason I want to die. Be quiet. Stop talking. And then, what do you mean I love you? How can I be the reason? I'm going to... I will delete myself right now. Okay? How dare you tell me what to do with my body, bitch? I love you. How dare you? Okay? Mind your own fucking business. But also... It was nice to know that I was loved and it was good to hear that people wanted me to stay alive. It just sucked that the way they expressed that was by telling me to go to church. By telling me to go to church? Jesus fucking Christ, bro. During that one and a half years while I was gone, the main thing I tried to figure out was what to do with that information. <laughs> I think finally outliving my 
fantasies of disappearing and realizing nothing is ever really going to happen to me and I'm not going to do anything to myself. Where do we go from here mm. now that we didn't get this magical, mystical, fix your life button? And the mm-hmm. truth of the matter is, I have no clue. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm alive or why I was put into. Ooh, is D'Angelo in a three moment or just in a two moment going to a new bubble? Ooh, I love this journey in a person. Okay, so is D'Angelo a two going to a new two bubble or a three realizing like, what the fuck am I doing here? Great question. Great. We love to see it. To this world, I am very strongly convinced that there might not be a reason at all. And And for the first time in my entire life, I think I'm actually completely fine with that. I'm going to wake up again tomorrow. And I'm probably going to have a good time recording that VMA video or doing whatever it is I feel compelled to do. Nice, I'm nice, probably nice. going to keep uploading just like I did 28 days in a row. I can't say it'll be 28 more days in a row, but I think it would be awesome because I've really been enjoying myself. I'm going to go about my day and it is going to be filled with so many pieces of the life I've had to build to sustain myself. So many thought processes, so many weird habits and strange ways of interpreting mm. events that are mandatory for my continued existence here on this planet. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. This is, okay, how to be a whole human being. Financial health is how are you surviving in the world? It is exhausting trying to survive in the world. It is the worst part about being alive. I promise you. It is the worst part. Surviving in the world is so difficult because it, it involves you and other people. That's why it's so, it's so exhausting. But also, it will set the tone for everything. And I'm not simply talking about your job. But how are you going to survive in the world so you can start motherfucking living, bros? Motherfucking living. Okay. I have to rationalize away my feelings again. And it's going to be fine. That's the thing I didn't realize. I know to many people that might not even sound like an answer. Okay, hold on. Chat says, but Brittany, how do you deal with your depression? First of all, I don't have depression because I beat my depression because it was a symptom of something else. You learn why you have it in the first place. It's not just out of the blue. You're not just simply depressed. There is a reason it's happening. Your brain. That's not just like your brain is thinking. I mean, you have literally like a a, a chemical or a clinical or a something is happening. Okay. Why is everything? Hey, why am I sad? Why am I depressed? Why am I this? I haven't had depression in five years. I've literally not been depressed. Why you are depressed is not just, do you have ADHD? And you're having like executive function problems, you know, like what, why are you having depression? It is for a reason, right? It doesn't, it doesn't just come out of anywhere, but the reasoning can help you figure it out. Like, why am I in chronic pain? Well, I have fibro. What's fibro? Well, they're not sure, but they think it's maybe a symptom of something else. Okay. So what's this something else? I don't know. They're still doing the data. Fuck. But fibro was a thing and they diagnosed me with it. But also they're pretty sure it's probably something else. But what's that something else? We don't know. That doesn't mean the pain's not happening. But now I know it's something. And at least I know, okay, I just have to wait for answers. So I can deal with it because I'm not worrying about like, okay, but like, why am I in pain? Well, I know why I'm in pain, but it's the the first why to the many whys in the future. There will be so many more whys after, but at least I have an answer. Answers, labels, diagnoses, give you an ability to readily accept where you are in the journey. Why am I having executive dif- dysfunction problems? Why am I fucking struggling today to brush my teeth? Like, what the fuck is that? And then I talk to my friend who's autistic and they're like, hey, what's your relationship with brush, you know, brushing your teeth? And I tell them this is my routine. These are the special toothpastes I use. I can't brush my teeth unless it's the special toothpaste. And if I don't have my toothpaste, like I'm not brushing my teeth. And then I talk about all my habits and then they look at me and they're like, a lot of autistic women struggle with this. And I'm like, what? And then you realize, wait, is it, I don't know, I'm going to get assessed. And after my assessment, they'll give me one more answer to head in one more direction of knowing why I struggle to brush my goddamn teeth if I don't have my special toothpaste. And that's the thing. Everyone else says it's not a big deal. They can use whatever toothpaste is available. But Brittany, if she uses any toothpaste but her special one, will gag. She will literally vomit in her sink. I will literally vomit. Vomit. And I'm finally at 35 years old going to a doctor to say, hey, why do I vomit if I don't use the right toothpaste? Tell me why. Because that's not a universal experience. You're not having a universal experience. You're having a specific one. And if it's specific, there's a reason. And if it's universal, there's a reason. 
that might not sound like an improvement. Like, well, what did you learn? Just that you're going to have to keep doing this forever? But what I realized was I have a 100% success rate. You can say what- Of what? Oh, I missed it. 100% sex, uh, set, 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 oh, 100% success rate of what? I have to rewind it. Hold on. Chat, uh, chat says, what are the healths to get in order, Brittany? Okay. To be a whole human being, you need to understand your relationship with your physical health. That's your body. Okay. That's your physical body. Your mental health. That's your brain. That's your brain. Your spiritual health, your philosophy, that's your consciousness. Okay. Financial health, that's how you're surviving in the world. And then who you are in the story, that's your trope. Who are you in the goddamn story? Are you Diddy? You need to fucking fix your life. Are you Andrew Tate? Fix your fucking life. Okay. Are you D'Angelo? You're doing pretty good, but you, you know, we can be healthier always. Okay. Who are you in the story? Find somebody in a TV show if you have to and say, okay, I think I'm a combination of this character, this character, this character. Figure out who you are in the fucking story. And if you don't like it, change it. How to be a whole human being. These are mine. This is how I figured it out. This, these are the things that I created for myself to help me. That's why I made the levels. That's why I do anything that I do. I'm like, hey, this really changed my life. I am a fundamentally better person. If this helps you, great. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. What you will about the things that I've messed up or, you know, the bad. Hold on, I'm going to rewind it for just a second. That might not sound like an improvement. Like, well, what did you learn? Just that you're going to have to keep doing this forever? But what I realized mm -hmm. was... I have a 100% success rate. You can say what you will about the things that I've messed up or, you know, the bad periods I've had. But as far as waking up and getting through the day, I have a 100% success rate. No matter how difficult it was or what I had to do to get to the end of it, I've gotten to the end of every single day thus far. And that's what I sort of realized. I can do that again tomorrow. I can. Even if tomorrow's not me being happy, I was wrong in thinking that I can't do this indefinitely. No matter what happens tomorrow, I'm still going to be here. Just like I have been here every day. Mm. Just like I've never been beaten, I guess, by my depression. Even mm. if I wake up tomorrow and it all falls apart, I am still going to get to the end of that day because I have a 100% success rate. Nice. If I wake up, do anything, go back to sleep, I won that day. Back when... I, I did not have a YouTube career. I was working at a gas station with a college degree. I couldn't get a job anywhere. What I didn't realize was I was still winning. When I was in school and every single day I looked for a new way out, I was still winning every single day. And I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I'm genuinely, I'm so proud of myself. Honestly, it sounds funny or sad or whatever to congratulate myself for a living, but that's what I was... I think it's really important to be compassionate with yourself and to give yourself those gold stars for really attaining those goals. You know, no gold stars for the basics, but gold stars for the things that for you are a challenge. The basics, things you can figure out and do, like no gold stars, but gold stars for the things that you do that are genuinely hard. If it is genuinely hard for you to wash the dishes, give yourself a goddamn gold star for doing it, okay? If it's genuinely hard for you to get up out of bed, like give yourself a gold star when you get out of bed. Reward yourself, but also be honest with yourself when you're giving in to that temptation to do less than you know you're capable of. I always say, do what you're capable of. I do a solid 83% every day, okay? I'm never gonna be 100% of what I was in my 20s, but I'm gonna be 100% of what I am in my 30s, and that's about 83%. For my autists in the audience, it's not a literal 100%. Do, no, do not push yourself to burn out every day. You push yourself so you don't burn out. You burn out the least amount of times, okay? And follow yourself and get to know yourself because if you're like me, one thing that changes in your schedule or ritual will end up leading to burnout if you don't fix it. I'm the kind of person that if I drink not enough water or have enough sleep or if I don't do the right things in the way that I'm supposed to, give it a week and I'm burnt out. If I don't get my shit under control within a couple of weeks of losing my rituals, my schedule... I'm going to burn out. I'm going to like, and this is something I'm always discovering about myself. Like, okay, if I eat this kind of food and I have this kind of sleep and I'm always experimenting, oh, if I shower at this time of the day, I notice I'm better. And it's a lot of work. You're constantly writing things down. You're constantly talking out loud. You're constantly saying, okay, if I do this, like I notice I do this. Oh, if I sleep in this temperature, I notice I sleep better. If I, yesterday I had a new dream. And I was like, oh my God. And it wasn't a dream where the world was ending or I was saving anybody. And I was like, I didn't have a nightmare yesterday. What did I do different? I literally woke up and I was like, oh my God. And I told my partner, I didn't have a nightmare last night. And he was like, what? And I was like, I didn't have a nightmare. And I dreamt about something positive. And I remember waking up and I was like, oh, I was like happy. Oh, that's so interesting. What did I do before I went to bed last night? 
Do you know the only thing I did different yesterday was that I watched a I watched like a romance comedy movie before bed and I fell asleep to it. I've never, I don't do that. And I did it last night. So I'm going to test it again tonight to see if I have a positive dream because I went to bed like having a positive, happy thought. Because usually before bed, I do have like a lot of like um, worry thoughts and like, you know, and then I started like thinking about breathing meditations before bed. And those don't seem to actually help with the nightmares. But I wonder if it was I was putting in something positive and funny and lighthearted before. So I don't know, but you know what? I'll experiment and I'll find out because I've experimented with breathing meditation. I've experimented with exercising. I've experimented with going on a walk before bed. I've experimented with showering. I've experimented. I don't know why I didn't think about watching like a comedy movie. I didn't know. I was like, maybe that's it. Like something funny before bed. I don't know. Let's see. Missing this whole time. I'm genuinely so proud of anyone who just woke up and tried sometimes that's the most difficult thing to do it's the hardest thing i can imagine doing is having to do any of this again but i will do it mm. again and honestly i'll make parts of it look easy because <laughs> i've been doing this a while it's not my first rodeo i think it really be and you see how success and status isn't the thing that makes you joyful this is why i say do not be jealous of the rich or successful do not envy what other people have it's not going to make you happy Everyone thinks, oh, if I'm D'Angelo Wallace, if I have a huge YouTube channel, if I'm successful, I'll be happy. You won't. You won't. Happiness is an emotion. It comes and goes. What you really want is joy. What D'Angelo wants is not happiness. He says, does anyone else feel like they'll never be happy? Okay, first of all, happiness is an emotion. It comes and goes. What he's really asking is, do you, do you think you'll, um, does anyone else ever feel like they'll never be joyful, content, happy, like happy in that sense? Do you get what I'm saying? So it's one of those things where this is a great question to ask yourself, but it's a journey. He's so young still. He's going to have so much time to figure it out, but I think this is a great moment in time for him. This is a change. We're seeing a different, in a way, he says he hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. I think this is a change. It's a, it's, it's a significant one, but a small one, but it, I think it is a change. I don't know. What do you guys think, right? It feels like a change. Big difference between me now at age 26 and me at age 21. I can do all this and then go back to work. <laughs> I can I can actually put all these feelings in a box, not because I want to hide them or seal them off. But the thing I couldn't accept before is that box is me. Mm. I am all of these feelings. I don't have to try to change. Ooh. I don't think you're your feelings or your thoughts. I think you are your relationship to yourself. Does that make sense? But this is a very big step. This is a very big step. I think this is a positive because you remember when he left the internet before that was different, but like, I do not think I am my borderline. I don't think I'm my depression. I don't think I'm my suicidal thoughts, which is why they're not a part of me anymore in that way, because they were never me. They're not me. They're just things I'm experiencing. So interesting. In them up and lock them down and duct tape them. This deserves a spot on my channel just as much as any of the content I've uploaded on the past 28 days because this is me. And because I have the experience now of so many days like this, it's not going to completely derail me. So I see a lot of comments on my recent videos saying like, he must be thriving, he's doing great, he's etc. And they're true. You know, I think looking at this zoomed out, it probably seems like I'm doing a lot better because in many ways I am looking at mm. Okay, hold on. Discord says, I haven't been depressed in so long that I know the difference between depression and is it hypo arousal? I definitely had periods of depression, but many of the times that I said I was depressed, I was really overwhelmed by anxiety. That's the other thing too. Are you depressed? Or are you anxious? Are you depressed? Or are you autistic? Is it depression or is it something else? And being very specific with this is exhausting, by the way. Like my depression was a symptom of my borderline, which might end up being a symptom of my autism. That's the irony. If I get diagnosed autistic in November, I need you to understand that this is going to pose a question for me about everything else that I was diagnosed with. What if my diagnosis, like if I'm autistic, that's going to change how I have a relationship to my other diagnoses. And maybe the borderline is still accurate. And I always think it is because the DBT worked. But if DBT work also works for autism, then maybe I'm autistic and never was borderline. Or maybe I'm borderline and was never autistic. Or maybe I'm... And this is why the construct of psychology is also really scary in some ways because it's still we're still learning so much about it and we're unsure. 
but it means that I was able to have a different relationship with my existence because I was able to move in a different direction. And I think that's what's important. You know? So whatever happens will happen. And I, like I've said to you guys before, I don't know how I'm going to handle either getting diagnosed as autistic or not autistic, but you know, it might be something that I don't talk about for a while. So just like a heads up, November is going to come and go and maybe I don't talk about it, but it's because I know I'm going to need to process it because it's going to change your perspective changes, right? Like you have a different relationship with yourself. When I was diagnosed with borderline, it changed my relationship with myself for the better because I didn't answer for why I was so miserable. But now that I'm better and I have all these methods, which is why I think I do have borderline. But now that it's like not a main character in my life, I'm like, well, what's this main character that keeps popping up because it feels different? There's another main character in my life and I don't know what it is. And I would like to know what it is. Because if it's just ADHD, girl, give me a pill. Give me a pill. Because it might be both on ADHD. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Looking at myself when I was 21 and realizing, wow, it seems like I've grown so much on the surface. But realizing that I didn't. I didn't find what I was looking for. I just kept going. I'm not less depressed than I was. I just know how to handle it a lot better. And I'm really really, really proud of myself for sticking to the point where I got better at managing this. I didn't get less sad. I just got older, y'all. I just got older. That helped. I think that helped more than I could possibly have conceived of when I was younger. And so, yeah, I used to just rage and cry and want to scream whenever anyone would say, it gets better, it gets better. You are not crazy for not relating to any of that. I know I'm not the only person who- It doesn't get better, you get better. I don't like that saying it gets better. Remember when they were doing it for gay people? Love that. I don't think it gets better. I think you get better. And I think that's the point. The it doesn't get better. Your depression doesn't get better. You get better. Your BPD doesn't get better. It's BPD. You get better. Your cancer doesn't get better. You get better. You know what I mean? Like you get better. So in my personal opinion, Kyle with the super chat, thank you so much, says donating to say I'm happy we're having this convo. Me too. It's a great convo. It's a great convo. Who understands fundamentally, this isn't going to get better. This is who I am. I'm not a problem, I guess. I don't need to be fixed. Similarly, depression. Mm, okay, so he sell, he's identifying with the thoughts. He's identifying with the depression. Mm, he's identifying with the depression. Interesting. He doesn't need to be fixed because it's just who he is. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Neuroplasticity says he's wrong. Well, it's not about being wrong. It's well, he's wrong, but it's also where he's at. So we're accepting the journey and where he's at. You know, after this, I'm going to show you a TikTok from an autistic therapist that's trying to teach people the difference between this is my autism and these are things I can change that are not my autism. Because if you're doing something because that's like autism, that's great. But if you're doing something because it's just what you think is your autism, we should change that because it's holding you back from being joyful, right? And I think like that is what's so important about these conversations. Like I don't think you are your depression and I don't even think you're your autism. But I think like your brain gives you only so many um, tools to operate and to process information. So, okay, this is a really important stage. I still think this is exactly where the journey goes. I've been here. I think this is vitally important to getting better. I bet in five years, we're gonna see a completely different D'Angelo Wallace. I really think he's gonna go through the journey, um, whether to be a joyful two or a five doesn't matter. But I think he's really asking himself some really important questions. I mean, he was already unique in his own ways. Like D'Angelo has always been, um, a pretty strong too, but also very unique in his own bubble. And I think he stands out for a good reason. If anyone could do the introspective work, I think it's him. But I think this is a very important stage. I hope he doesn't stay here though, because that's the crux of it is some people stay at this stage. Uh, but I hope, I hope he keeps going, you know, but he has to go through the stage to go beyond it anyway. So question is not, it's not mine to beat. My only job is to not let it beat me. And okay, two of you in chat said the same thing. So I'll just read it out loud. When depression um, has been your most of your life, it's easy to conflate it with yourself. Exactly, 100%. And this, in the same way homophobia has been your whole life, it's easy to make it seem like your whole life is going to be homophobia. Your life is not the thing that happens outside of yourself. That happens outside of your consciousness. 
This is why I say like my brain might be depressed, but I'm not. Because I need it to be clear to you that I used to think I was the one who was depressed because I used to think I was my brain. But then I realized that voice inside of my head that was tucked in the corner being sad and being like, why are we so sad? That's the version of me that I make the main focus of my life. And maybe you don't have an internal monologue like I do, but this is the thing that I made me realize like when I see an intrusive thought, I go, look at that. That has nothing to do with me. Like this body is just a vessel that's holding my consciousness. Ironically enough, Drew mentioned that too. Drew and I come from such different bubbles, but we have such similar philosophies on life. I'm so shocked. I'm shocked after reading her book, how much we overlap with our ideas. But she she believes in body neutrality, as do I. Like my body is not who I am. I am not my gender or my body. I am the, uh, but my, but they are holding the thing that is me which Drew was saying about her own life. Like her body is not who she is. It's just holding the thing that is her. And I believe that too, you know? So just remember that like there is another side to this. This is not the end of the journey, but you can choose for it to be. And the same way that like a five can get lost in two bubbles again, maybe not become a two, but could get lost in five, like two bubbles. You have to actively choose to introspect. It's really hard. And I'm not saying D'Angelo has to do it. I'm saying he doesn't have to do anything. He is under no obligation to do anything. But this is a very personal journey. It's a very personal journey. And that's why I remember like this introspection journey has nothing to do with us. It's not for us to say what D'Angelo should do. It's up to D'Angelo to have that relationship with himself. He has to have the conversation with himself. You know? Yeah. Okay. And I win. I win every single day that I wake up and I try my best. If trying my best looks like hours and hours of new content a week about all these cool things that people are having so much fun with, that's not more of a win than the year and a half when I was gone. It's not. I don't have more value because I am doing more. And when I have to pick things up, I have to figure things out. I'm not going to be worth less in the future if I do less. So I guess if I had to answer the question, does anyone else feel like they'll never be happy? I will never possess what I thought happiness was when I was younger. That's the biggest thing I've had to accept as an adult. I will never possess what I imagined happiness to be. And truly, I'm fine with that. Mm. I don't need what isn't for me because I have done a lot with what is for me. Look what I did. You know what I mean? Look what I was able to do. And then look beyond that and look at the fact that I'm still here at all. The truth of the matter is during my break, I didn't know if anyone was going to watch me when I came back. I've seen channels that disappeared for the exact amount of time that mm -hmm. I left and they came back and the channel was dead. The YouTube algorithm rewards constant posting, <laughs> which is why my videos have been doing really well, which I'm happy about. But the flip side of that is it can really penalize you if you don't post. There are the lucky ones that they it just it seems like some people disappear and come back and disappear and come back and every video is bigger than the last ones. But what no one really talks about is the channels that disappear and come back and no one ever saw it. That notification. True. Very true. Sometimes I realize that bigger content creators come back. I'm like, oh my God, like it hit my algorithm, but I can tell it's not hitting anyone else's. It's very interesting, actually. I'm sorry I've been away for two years or I'm back after three years, but like it doesn't get the same traction. D'Angelo really rebuilt. It was kind of, it's kind of amazing, honestly. Um, hold on. I saw a comment. Uh, where is it? 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 He just said that he needs to make it through each day and honestly sounds exhausting. Definitely a stage in my life I've had where I'm like, just make it through today. Just make it through today. For Brittany, those are the days I feel the most stressed and they can happen even now. They're not consistent, but I notice that if I am very stressed, my body's like, make it through today make it through today. And that's really helpful, but I work very hard to stay not stressed because stress is a part of life, but you can mitigate that stress. And I am not in a heightened stress situation most of the time. I would say like uh, the last time I was stressed in that way was during immigration a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, I was so stressed. And I was like, get through the day, get through the day. Most days now, when I figure I'm getting, if I'm feeling any kind of stressed, it's like, um, I try not to, I try just to say like, um, I think it feels different now where, uh, if I'm tired, like you notice I end stream, I end stream when I want to. Have you noticed that? I, I try really hard to say, okay, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. And then I end stream. 
I only push myself when I really think I have the spoons. But if I don't and I'm like, I don't want to stay and it's it's not worth it to me, I'll end stream early, even if it's 1130 or if it's like, and that's my way of saying I'm not going to stress myself out to perform for the internet, to do whatever it takes to quote like, oh, if you really want to be a streamer, you'd stream 10 hours a day. I am a streamer, bitch. And I don't have to stream 10 hours a day. And though it would be great for bigger viewership, I don't need bigger viewership to pay my bills. Because if I'm stressed and burning out, I'm not going to stream for months. If I burn out, because I'm not playing this game against these other people that are doing whatever they're doing. So for me, it's like, that's why I try very hard. And I hope that you guys see that as like, Brittany logs off, log off. Log off. Okay, log off. But a day is just a day. So get through it is a very normal part of a process. It's okay to say, just get through the day, girl. Because tomorrow going to be a new day. But also, I hope that's not the majority of your life at some point. Notification never went out. The people who did remember weren't enough to push that video to the people who deserve to see it. Mm -hmm. I realized during my break that my YouTube career might be over. And so I had to fully mm -hmm. accept the fact that that was the end of the chapter in which YouTube was supposed to make me happy. And funnily enough, that chapter is still closed, even though I'm posting all of these videos. I'm not doing this because I think it's going to finally change that thing that doesn't change. I'm doing this because I'm having fun and I know that I'm making people's day better. Mm -hmm. I was so fed up with my content before because I didn't know how to balance it. There was a lot of negativity, but now I know I'm doing a good job balancing my topics out. Do you know how I know? Because I'm fine. I nice. like my videos now. I nice. like this channel. I like what I'm able to do. Luck doesn't begin to cover the fact that I left, I came back, and I'm now doing better than ever. Mm -hmm. Y'all have to realize mm -hmm. there was a larger possibility that you never would have seen me in a video. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, this is very important. Uh, Pom, thank you and welcome, says, is there a new place that explains the number system you use? I'm newer here, great question, thank you for asking. In the description, it's called The Levels, it's my philosophy system. If you're interested in philosophy, like us nerds, in the description, there's a link and you can watch it there, especially if you love Avatar The Last Airbender. That's the example I use to explain my system just because it's like such a good show, guys. Avatar emojis in the chat, guys. Avatar emojis in the chat. All right, link in the description. Ever again. And so I will never take that for granted. I'll never take the ways in which YouTube has enabled me to take a break for mm -hmm. granted. But just know that this happiness is me now. I don't know what me in the future is going to be, but I'm going to be there. Nice. You know what I mean? It'll be nice. I can't wait to meet him, bro. I can't wait to meet D'Angelo in the future. How exciting. I can't wait to meet myself in the future. I can't wait to, you know, see who's here in the future. Who knows? No, no requirement to stay in the audience. I don't want to control your journey. But, I, you know, I can't wait to see who we all are in the future. Cool. If you were there, <laughs> I would love that, actually. And who knows? I am only 26. Maybe my perspective will completely change in the future. But for the very first time, I'm fine if it doesn't. I'm mm -hmm. fine with where I am right now. I've spent my entire life just winning every single day against odds. Interesting. Hold on. I don't know what this conversation is about in chat, but just this one line, what do you even understand to be depressed at four? Everything. My earliest memory as a three, my own relationship with my brain, I was a very fucking smart aware kid. Like I was processing adult conversations. I was sitting in the room with people. I was having conversations as a child. I was having philosophy debates with adults as a child. Like I have distinct memories asking myself like, what do you think this human's thinking? And like, what's the purpose of life? And I remember being so young and having like very like complex thoughts about life. So I don't know if it's just certain, I, I think it's neurodivergency, frankly, or I think it's like very specific, like introspective little kids. But I think some brains just work that way. I was given a brain that as a child, I remember having very like long conversations with myself about existence and characters I saw on TV and my own parents. And I used to think like, oh, what does this mean? And how does this work? And I don't know. Like, I think there's a lot a four-year-old could know, but that doesn't mean they're wise, right? Like I'm not even a wise person now and I'm 35. So I think we mistake sort of like the levels of, you know, what do you even know at four years old to be depressed? I mean, you could know plenty. You could just know you exist. I mean, animals get depression, right? Like animals with the intellect of less than a four-year-old child experience depression. So it's like maybe it's genetic, but everything is genetic because everything is biology.
but what is this thing? Who knows? I mean, what are you anyways? Are you even you? Do you even exist? I mean, great question. Odds that genuinely felt insurmountable and the tips and tricks I picked up along the way for how to balance things out, they made it easier. It did not get easier. I just got better at dealing with it. If it all falls apart again, I'm still going to be here at the end of it. Then I'll pick up the pieces and see what I learned that time. Nice. I used to think that's nice. That's exactly what you should do. That's exactly what you should do. You should break shit down and bring it back together. If it breaks down, put it back together in a better way and keep the shit parts out. Great plan, D'Angelo. Some people just seem like they live their lives as like a collection of happy moments joined by the occasional low point. And that mm. made me feel so broken. Uh, genuinely, like something was wrong with me because I, I knew that I was just living all bad with the occasional <gasps> high point where I am slightly above rock bottom. But any level of happiness I knew was temporary and just shrouded in that nasty thought that like, this is just until it all comes crashing down again. But now I see the neutrality, actually. Bad things mm. or good things will happen. I'll have good days or bad days, but objectively, I'll get through them. I'm mm -hmm. proud of myself for never figuring it out. I'm proud of myself that I didn't figure it out at 18. I'm proud of myself that I didn't figure it out at 21. And I'm proud of myself for recently realizing, ah, there was nothing to figure out. The fact that I never figured it out and just persisted in spite of all of that is pretty amazing when you really think about it. And I feel the same way about anybody who may be struggling. I could be 40, 45 and say to myself, it doesn't matter that I never figured it out. What did I do? In what is the it? <clears throat> What is the it that we're figuring it out is in D'Angelo's bubble? Like, what's the it that he's referring to? In spite of that, as long as the answer is as much as I could, hey, what do I even owe anybody? I don't owe the world happiness. I don't. I'm right. proud of myself. And how could I not be proud of anybody who is in the same scenario? Anyways, the VMAs, am I right? This <laughs> is some crazy outfits. I'm going to record that video next and I'm going to have fun doing it. I'm going to drink some water. I'm going to mm. play uh, Astro. Oh, life and purpose. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks, Scooter. Okay, life, purpose. Yes. Okay, fire. Good. This is good. Robot on the PS5. Oh, I've been looking forward to that. I'm going to get a full night's sleep. I'm going to read your comments. I'm going to do all the things and none of them are going to fix me because I was never broken. Uh, I was never broken. Hmm. Mm. In a philosoph philosophical sense, nobody is broken. We are simply are. Yeah, in a philosophical sense, on the macro, there is no such thing as a broken. There's only that we are. On the micro, there's a broken because we want to fix things. So in a philosophical sense, this is quite a huge breakthrough for D'Angelo. Oh. <sighs> Mm, 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 mm. interesting yeah maiden said it great the broken is only in the context of the arena exactly yeah 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 your arena dicks takes the this is why the construct is so important because how are you viewing yourself yeah okay this is a great breakthrough for d'angelo i'm really stoked about this this is great i wonder where he's gonna land yeah in a couple years we'll check back in and see because you know this is what I'm saying about watching a person change. Like we are witnessing a changing person. What an amazing experience for us to view and then to realize like, how does this relate to our own life? Yeah, wow, that's a big deal. This is a big deal. Yeah, I, it's curious how he'll have this conversation in two years because the language he's using now is like, I think perfect for where he's at, but I don't think it's the permanent language he'll end up using in the future to some extent. But I think like that's a beautiful and I love it and I'm here for it. Mm. Yeah, great, great. Great, thank you for suggesting this guys because the Discord put it in the, the, the thing. Wow, don't you love to see? This is what I'm saying. The reason I created the levels was to ask myself, what's this thing that people are going through and where does this put D'Angelo? Because D'Angelo was always about the bubble. Always, always, always. That's why I didn't even like D'Angelo in the beginning because I was like, ah, I'm not really in this bubble right now. And then I jumped into the bubble and I was like, okay, I'll have fun in D'Angelo's bubble. And I was having fun, but it sounds like D'Angelo was popping bubbles. How many is he popping? How? What is he popping is the question. You know what I mean? Hold on. What is this Discord chat? I don't see the channel for it. Uh, which one? Seems like sometimes you're replying to separate Discord chat. Oh, there is a Discord chat. It's under videos. Oh, I just joined Patreon. How do we join the Discord? Hello. All right. Shout out to D'Angelo. Shout out to patrons. Thank you guys so much for doing that. And 
we're going to end it here on the D'Angelo story. We love to see people introspect. This is the joy of introspection. You have a better relationship with yourself. And then in turn, extrospection allows you to have a better relationship with everything outside of yourself. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun.